them boys with the farm strength. Ain't nobody man enough to feel the pain. Before I start this review, I want to give a big shout out to at MikeWell87 for all the layouts he's made, all the way from early October for No Mercy to now, and hopefully moving on. I really want to thank this guy very much because this guy is very artistic as fuck. His Twitter link will be in the description box below. Well, you can go follow him there. Show the man some love. Appreciate what he does. This guy is phenomenal. And I want to give a, 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 a shout out also to JD from New York because without without me recognizing that at Mike Will does his stuff, then I, I don't know if this will be happening right now. So. I mean, this guy is fantastic. This guy is just artistic as shit. Like I said, Twitter link is in the description. Show him some love. Follow him on Twitter. All right. Like, tell him that I that I tell you to go follow him. All right. Just, just yeah, because this guy is so awesome, and I thank him for it. Much love from your boy. Now let's begin this review. What a pay per view SmackDown Live has. Done it again. Whew. With only two weeks to build. It's still better than Monday Night Raw. Not the Raw that I went to. Not the Raw when they had the draft. No, the, the, the Raw after the draft, I mean, on July 25th. Not the Raw when Kevin Owens won the Universal title. Not the Raw when Shane McMahon, McMahon came back to WWE. Not the Raw... After the Raw, after WrestleMania. But yeah, TLC was a great show. Now, if you go back on the pay per views, we had Backlash, Class of Champions, Hell in the Cell, No Mercy, and now Survivor, and then Survivor Series, but that's a dual brand. I'm, I'm, I'm specifically talking about exclusive pay per views alone. Obviously, SmackDown has been winning, SmackDown has been dominating, alright? SmackDown's 2-0, in my opinion. 2-0. and all. Okay, because, you see, look at it like this. People say, oh, Hell in a Cell beat No Mercy. I disagree. Because you got to think about it. No Mercy, there was a championship match that should have been the main event, but it was the first match of the night, the WWE title match. And then they put the match that we barely cared about, the last match of the night. So I, I didn't get that, but... Still better than Hell in the Cell. Hell in the Cell, we had Reigns versus Rusev, worst Hell in the Cell match ever, right? And then the one match that actually everyone cared about was Rollins versus Owens in a in a uh, Hell in the Cell match. That was it. After that, no one, no, nothing else cared. Nothing else mattered. The Hell in the Cell women's match. First of all, it didn't need to be Hell in the Cell. That's one. I mean, I wanted to be in Hell in the Cell, but if it did shit like that, no. Didn't need to be in Hell in the Cell. That's one. Number two, the the ending was awkward. It was it was awful. Fuck it. Slide off the damn table like it was grease. Like she's sliding off grease. Like she's fucking sliding on a slide, like a water slide. She's sliding, wee, having fun on the damn table when she's supposed to go through the damn table like Becky Lynch did on SmackDown this past Tuesday night. And then Natural Selection... Charlotte won the title again, so Hell in the Cell obviously was bad compared to No Mercy. At least No Mercy, it was a two-match pay-per-view, but at the same time, better than Hell in the Cell because the tag team title match was great, in my opinion. The Intercontinental title match should have been the main event if the title, was, if the world title was not going to be the main event. And then, yeah, everything else on that show was great, so... Let's see what Roblox can, what Roblox can do this time. But um, let's get into the show. We were live in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, 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 Texas. Pay-per-view begins. I don't know why Tom Phillips is at ringside again. Uh, four people, really? Can we go back to two? Just put Mar Ronaldo and JBL, please. Two people. This is why I love WWE back then. I've been watching... So much attitude there. You have no fucking clue. The dynamic between JR and Jerry Lawler. I swear to God. It's like never ending. It's, it's there for life. It's there for life, bro. 
I can't take it anymore. This four men, three people. I heard Percy Watson was gonna be NXT announcer, or like like you know commentator. Really, Percy Watson with the Steve Urkel glasses, and he and then the the stupid. Oh yeah, remember that? Remember that shit? Rem remember that shit? Oh yeah. For fuck, go look up Percy Watson. You'll know exactly what I mean. God, God, I don't know. <sighs> Nobody from old NXT should be on my fucking screen, okay? Like, the ones that didn't make it, I mean. I mean, I'm not talking about Darren Young or Heath Slater or Bray Wyatt or none of these guys. I mean, people that didn't make it, like a Mark Michael Tarver. Uh, the Guys like that, you know. So we start the show off with the tag team title. I thought Randy Orton's old theme song was going to come through, the burn of my life, but obviously not. It shifted directly into the... Uh, the Wyatt family thing, and then Wyatt family came out. I'm really loving this thing, this Wyatt family situation with Randy Orton. I'm really, I'm really digging that shit. So, what happens? I got what I wanted. The Wyatt family is the new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. Hell yeah. I agree with this 100%. No doubt. So, let's move on to the next match. Carmella versus Nikki Bella. I'm not going to go into details on the matches that much unless something really big happened. Nothing big happened. The only thing that confused me was that it was 15 minutes. It was 15 minutes. By the way, can I just say I love the graphics. Like, you see, when it's a title match, you see the graphics that they show on the TV screen. I love the SmackDown tag team title graphic. Better than a Raw tag team title graphic. The WWE Women's, I mean, it's the same thing as Raw, so I'm not going to say anything. The Universal title graphic, I love that. WWE World Championship graphic, I love that too. So, <sighs> I'm really loving these graphics. But anyways, yeah. I'm not going to go into that much detail. No DQ match. Carmelo versus Nikki Bella. I thought in a no DQ match, there was supposed to be count outs. I mean, there's not supposed to be count outs. Like, no DQ, no count out, but it's a no DQ, but there is count out. I didn't know that. So, Carmella did her best. She did everything she could. She put Nikki Bella in the tree of one. Let me say this. Nikki Bella looked great in two ways. Okay, I'm not, gonna, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to explain them to you. What are those two ways, okay? I don't think I need to. Anyways, Nikki Bella looked great. Her hairstyle was great. I I I honestly thought of I I Superwoman. I'm not bullshitting. I even tweeted it and used her Twitter handler in my fucking tweet earlier. She did not leave a like or anything. But anyways, yeah. <clears throat> she reminded me of her. And yeah. So they're fought it out. Kendo sticks. Uh attacking the legs and, and fire extinguisher galore. And what what was what was the end was that Nikki Bella sprang her like she's like like I I knew Carmella was hot but I didn't know she was that hot to where Nikki Bella had to spare her down with the goddamn fire extinguisher and had to put her out and then she <laughs> used the rack attack 2.0 and got the win the uh, TKO finishing maneuver Nikki Bella gets the win and Carmella reveals saying Yo Nikki guess what. I wasn't the one that attacked your ass at Survivor Series. It was Natalia. Dun dun dun. Be better if I had the music. Dun dun dun. You know what I mean. Carmella basically says, "Look, I I didn't attack your ass. All right, it was Natalia, and it makes sense. I knew it was with Natalia all along. When Natalia came through at Survivor Series, trying to trying to warm up to Daniel Bryan, warm up to to Nikki Bella, I'm like, it was your bitch ass, wasn't it? It was you, Natalia. Don't don't bullshit me, right? Oh, yeah, just letting you know if you made it this far in the video, my Wi-Fi is trash as fuck, to where I." I'm not uploading videos, like, reactions, I mean. I'm not uploading reactions until until I, until I get it done, by, at least by tomorrow. I, I, I'll get them done, hopefully, before Monday Night Raw. That's all I'm saying. 
All right, that's all I'm saying. And thankfully, this pay per view was not two hours. I mean, sorry, not three hours like straight. It was two hours and like 30, 40 minutes. So that that's good because the match, the, I think the TLC match ended about ten forty five. I think so. So the pay per view ended at ten forty five. So that's bless. So I enjoyed that. Mm. So we go on to. The Intercontinental Championship ladder match. Miz went up to Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan being interviewed by that Dasha woman. I don't know her. I can't pronounce her last name. I'm not even going to try, okay? Daniel Bryan was asked, and Bryan says that, yes, Miz brought the, the star quality to the title, but Dolph Ziggler will be a better representative for the SmackDown brand. Miz hurts him. Miz hurts him, and he's like, okay, just you admitted that you you don't like me. You know, Bryan never liked your ass. Neither have I. You see, I was like that Miz girl set, uh, six years ago, okay? I was like that Miz girl six years ago. Mad, upset, but I was shocked mostly because you won the WWE title, Miz. I'll never forget that night. The Raw after Survivor Series. With John Cena have to come out and say he's he's going away, see his, see his mom, seeing his brother. You know, his brother had a kid and he wasn't there and all that good, good. But then Cena's like... LOL, I ain't going nowhere, bitch. <laughs> and then he comes back the next week. <laughs> yeah, so, Miz and Ziggler had the second best match of the night, in my opinion. They tore the house down. The Miz did his stuff. Dolph Ziggler did his stuff. In the end, the Miz, Maurice, did not get involved. I love that. So, that means Miz earned this victory. I'm not saying he didn't earn the other ones. I'm just saying he earns this one more. It's like more, a tiny bit more legitimate than the other ones because at least no one can say, oh, oh, Mar Maurice got involved. No, 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 no. Miz came through. He did what he had to do and he got the job done. And then, yeah, got the championship. He may hit a low blow, but low blows are legal. No DQ, no ladder match, bro. So it's all good. And uh, Miz said this match was dedicated to Daniel Bryan, the general manager. And then we're going to Kalisto and Mary Corbin. Baron Corbin, Kalisto tore that. Like, th this had to be the third best match of the night. Because this match, they, they bust their ass, right? Chair, 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 chair spot, chair spot, piles of chairs all over there. Like, all over the place. Holy shit. Kalisto is about to go for a big dive to the outside. Baron Corbin caught him into a deep six. Onto the floor. God damn. So. And then after that, after that. I don't know why I said that twice. <laughs> Barry Corbin. Hits Kalisto with the end of days. Right on to the pile of chairs. After he dashed the chair into Kalisto's face. And uh, yeah. So. That's what's good in the hood. Smackdown Women's title on the tables match. Bliss versus Lynch. Lynch lost. Alexa Bliss won the title. I am not pissed. I am not upset. I said I would be equally happy as fuck that Bliss would be the champion. And I can't wait to see what she's going to be. She came on Talking Smack. She was emotional. She was crying a little bit, tearing up. But at the same time, she got to keep that bitch character going. She can't be soft. You know, Renee almost like, you got to get back in his credit. Alexa Bliss is like, who? What? Who? Becky who? Lynch who? What? Give who credit? No, I give myself credit. I did this. I earned this title. What did Lynch do for me? I ain't doing nothing for her. I earned this. So, yeah. That was some good shit. Talking Smack, it was a great uh, little show, but then they cut it off and Brian and Miz were neck and neck at each other, bro. Or... Like, you know, Miss is taller than Brian, so... You know you know what I mean. They're face-to-face, -face, so... Yeah. Later on, the main event, Ambrose Styles. These guys, Jesus Christ, best match of the goddamn night. Whoo! Oh, my God. These guys went through the crowd, came back... Ladders, chair spot, the, the tables. Oh, my God. God, all over the place. 
And then uh, let's just get let's just these are my three big points of this match. One, AJ Styles pants ripped, and I swear to God we've been looking at his butt at his 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 uh his uh left butt cheek. I I don't know. Pause on that, but you know what I mean, okay? It 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 looked like we were all looking. You were you were looking. Don't 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 give me that bullshit. You were looking. We were all looking at AJ Styles' buck uh, uh left left butt cheek because of that hole in his pants. And then, cause I'm thinking, okay, he's in front of a lot of people. They're looking at him and they're like, oh shit, he has a hole in his pants, you know. But anyways, that's one. Number two, 450 splash. From the inside of the ring to the outside, into the table, onto Dean Ambrose. Jeez. Greatest wrestler in the freaking galaxy. That's what I tweeted out. And then the third match reminded me of... Uh, the third match. The third part of this match reminded me of a Jeff Hardy situation. SummerSlam 2009. Jeff Hardy's last pay-per-view match in the main event. Uh, Jeff Hardy dove off the ladder, Swanton, on to CM Punk. I remember it vividly so much because I used to have the DVD and I used to play that shit over and over and over again. Anyways, so he did Swanton on to CM Punk and holy shit, that was crazy. And then that's what Ambrose and Ambrose had AJ on the announce table. He was on top of the ladder. The ladder was on top of the, the, the Spanish announce table and he just jump off, elbow drop. Right to D, I'm right on to uh, AJ Styles. Ambrose about to go for the championship, and then Elseworld is like, "Nah, you're good," and he just pushed him off the ladder. AJ Styles gets in the ring and he catches the WWE World Championship. What a match! Elseworld is now looking forward to get his title shot this Tuesday on SmackDown. What a pay per view! If you enjoyed the show, if you enjoyed this review, please leave a like on this video and subscribe now for more. Follow me on Twitter at. Boy one two three Jim and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for the layout at Mike Will eighty seven and I'm out. Peace.